So what exactly is the data warehouse? Now, let me first take a simple English language example. What is a warehouse? A warehouse is a place where something is stored, a goods is stored. So now if I take the e-commerce, now e-commerce is a very big thing here, here in India. So if I take an example of an e-commerce website, now they have a warehouse where they will project a demand of a demand for products they will procure it from the suppliers and store it in the warehouse now as soon as a supplier places the order the good is immediately dispatched now take the data warehouse out of the equation what do you get you have the customers directly going to the e-commerce website the e-commerce website is not storing any goods when an order is placed the e-commerce website people will directly go to the supplier and ask for the product now imagine the tremendous now if hundred suppliers go to the e uh, to the manufacturer asking for the product because there is big demand from the consumers imagine the strain that is placed on the manufacturer to supply those products that is looking from the manufacturers perspective now look from the customers perspective there is a delay in getting the product that a customer has ordered now nobody would like a delay I don't like a delay you don't like a delay if I order something on an e-commerce website I expect it to be delivered now if there is a delay of two days or three days definitely it impacts the customer satisfaction levels and definitely you will lose customers so that is an important concept to understand similarly exactly uh, similar to this is the data warehouse where you will be storing the data that you will procure from the transaction system. Let me introduce two concepts here, two words, OLTP and OLAP, Online Transaction Processing and Online Analytical Processing. Analytical processing is where you use the data warehouse. Transaction processing is something that you will use to record each and every transaction. Let me give you a real life example. We all use ATMs every transaction that we do on an ATM is recorded in an OLTP system. Now ATM is not the only feeder to this OLTP system. Now when you go to a bank account and perform a transaction even that is recorded. So there are multiple sources feeding into a particular system. Now if you want to perform querying on this system you will have to have you will have to join find multiple different sources which have different formatting types of their own so and the second disadvantage is the number of transactions hundreds of customers use an ATM in a given day and hundreds of queries I mean thousands of queries and millions of queries are being hit on the entire OLTP system so imagine there are a number of ATMs and a number of branches. Imagine the load that is going into the OLTP system. So this system is definitely not used for querying purposes. This system is definitely not used for analytical purposes. This system is only used to record a transaction. Right? So now you have seen what is an OLTP system and what is an OLTP, OLAP system. Let me give you another example to illustrate the different sources. Now, railway reservation. What are the ways in which you can reserve a railway ticket? You can go through mobile. You can go to the railway station to reserve. You can go to n number of agents that are spread across the city. These are multiple disparate sources. When you book a ticket on the internet, the format is entirely different from the one that you use to book from the mobile the data types are changing the kind of data that you record is changing so these multiple disparate sources make it very difficult for querying right so I gave you two examples one is the ATM example to illustrate how much strain it would place for querying on an OLTP system the second example illustrates the multiple disparate sources which would be very which would be a hindrance to analytical processing Now based on this, at the end of the day, the end user would want reporting. The end user would want data for his reporting purpose. 
what do you do? So you create an alternate system. This is called as an OLAP system. There are, as you can see from the diagram of the first slide, there are multiple sources, source 1, source 2 to source n feeding into a data warehouse. Now, this is not a simple feed. There are a lot of uh, calculations, lot of processing that happens before, a lot of validations that happen before uh, data is loaded into the warehouse. And at the end, you have multiple users, user 1, user 2 and user n trying to access this warehouse and trying to get some data and generate the reports. Now, what is the business benefit that a business gets by implementing a warehouse? We all know that this is an era of competition and intense competition. It is not just enough if you take smart decisions, but you also have to take it on time. If you miss taking a decision, somebody else is already there pouncing on you. So let me take another example of a supermarket chain. Assume a supermarket chain is not implementing any data warehouse. It is very difficult for this supermarket to analyze what products are sold, what products are not selling, when is the time that the sales go up, what is the age group of the customers that are buying a particular product. So none of this analysis is possible. What you have is uh, some goods getting in, some goods getting out without knowing anything. Now, that is not an ideal scenario. I want to make a decision, for example, when I say that this particular product is a hit among 18 to 25 age group, I will intensify my efforts to market that particular product to that particular age group, right? And suppose I get from the data that I see that this particular product is not selling as is as it is expected. So I will analyze why why this product is not selling. What are the what is the reason? Is this product not selling during a particular period of time? Maybe from January to April when it is not selling, or is it not selling throughout the year? And then I'll be in a better position to make decisions to either not take the product or suggest some improvements so that the product starts selling. So these are smarter decisions and if you don't take them on time, then customers will obviously move out. This is about the supermarket chain. Now, this, this is regarding the customer satisfaction. When I talk about the strategic value that is given to a company, let me take an example of procurement department. Every company procures certain things from suppliers. There will be hundreds of suppliers supplying a product to a company. For example, desktops, laptops, stationery, etc. Now, before making any purchase, the company will definitely ink a contract with the supplier saying that if you are charging 100 rupees for a particular product, you please give us at a discount of 80 rupees because we are procuring and what are the terms that are that should be followed when the procurement should be made and etc, etc. Now, what is the guarantee that the supplier is following all the uh, terms set in the contract? When a particular purchase is made, definitely a supplier will give an invoice to the company and that invoice is a record of that particular transaction. Now I want to match this invoice data with the actual contract data to see whether all the terms are being matched or not. For example, the contract says 100 rupee product should be sold for us, uh, sold to us at 80 rupees and if the invoice says that it is more, it is uh, the invoice says that the charge has been 100 rupees. So now how do you analyze if the data is not there? Hundreds of suppliers are producing such invoices to the company. Now you cannot go and sit with each and every invoice and do manual effort. So what we do is we will load the data into the dimensions and extract reports and see whether there is a match or a mismatch. If there is a mismatch, we will schedule a meeting with the suppliers and ask him why he has done so. so this is the strategic advantage and also it gives the company more negotiating power. 
if for example a supplier has increased the price of a product to about 120 just in the previous month and in the subsequent month again he has increased to 140 now you can go and question him as to why he is doing that but in the absence of data you end up paying much more so the primary reason for a data warehouse is for a company to get that extra edge this extra edge can be gained by taking smarter decisions in a timely manner Smarter decisions can be taken only if executive responsible for such decisions have data at their disposal. Now there was a time when uh, fact-based decision and exper experience-based decision making was much more prevalent. We are moving from that area and going into an area where fact-based decisions have become, have gained importance in our life. So data is very essential. Let us consider some strategic questions that a manager or an executive has to answer. How do we increase the market share of this company by 5%? Now, data warehouse is used for a specific business scenario. You need to know. That is the difference between having the big data. A lot of courses are there on Edureka on big data and Hadoop, etc. Those are unstructured data data from social media, Facebook, logs, clicks, hyperlinks, etc, etc. And you can just use them and store them uh, without even knowing what you will get out of the data. But in a data warehouse, you will have to first have a clear cut requirement that this is the question that I am asking, this is the objective that I am going to set and only after you set it will you go forward in implementing a data warehouse because data implementing a data warehouse is very expensive and if the end result is not matching your expectations, you would have put millions of dollars uh, into creating something that you don't need and that is not an ideal situation. So first you set your questions, what business scenario do you want to answer using this data warehouse and then you go about creating the warehouse. Which product is not doing well in the market? I have already given you an example of a supermarket chain. Uh, to analyze which product is selling, which product is not selling, which product is being purchased more by a specific age group, etc. Which agent needs help with selling policies. Another example that I can give is the insurance sector. Suppose you observe that a particular, using your data warehouse of course, that a particular agent is not selling policies as expected or as uh, expected or uh, in line with what other agents are selling. Now you have identified him through your reporting. Now what do you do? You understand the reason why he is not selling as much as he is expected to do. Maybe he is selling uh, a few far, far less uh, than what the others are selling. You will identify is there a deficiency in the company, is there a deficiency in the learning that we have provided to him, is there uh, some, uh, does he need more uh, training, does he need more competence, etc. Based on that, you can add tremendous value to that insurance agent who is not doing well and you can actually motivate him and uh, guide him into performing better. Now in the absence of a data warehouse, you just know that he is selling so and so policies and you just end up admonishing him. So this is where even the employee satisfaction also can be gauged using the uh, data in the warehouse. What is the quality of the customer service provided and what improvements are needed? Of course, uh, this is very important uh, because uh, I will cover in the subsequent chap uh, slide. Uh, there are two main reasons why company uh, uses a warehouse and one of the, one of the important factors is the customer uh, satisfaction. Now, when a manager or an executive asks a question. Now what is the flow that or the approach that he takes in order to arrive at the final decision? Now let us take an example. What is the quality of the customer service provided and what improvements are needed to be done? This is a larger question. Now he will break it down into multiple smaller questions. How many customer feedbacks do we have in the last six months? That is the first subset question that he has asked which is derived from the overall question. Now he will fire a query on the database to analyze. So he, 
the database holds every customer feedback that he has got so he will just make a statistic out of it how many customer feedbacks the second subset question is now you have the number of feedbacks how many customers have given a feedback of excellent how many averages and how many bad now you will, of course you will have the customer name and the feedback given in two separate columns so you will group by the feedback you will group by the feedback how many excellent uh, feedbacks have you got? Let us say you have got 25 excellent feedbacks, uh, 20 average feedbacks and 15 bad feedbacks. Now what is the next question that I have to ask? Now why are people giving excellent? Why are people giving average? Why are people giving bad? They will have another column which has comments column. What are the comments that the customers have given in their feedback? Maybe one person says that your distribution channel is not good. Maybe one person says that your support is not good. And that is the reason why they have given. So we can identify why they have given the feedback that they have given. So all these three questions combined, you can have an overall picture of the quality of the customer service and what improvements are needed. Now he will hit the database, data warehouse, every time to get the result of these questions, he will consolidate all these results and arrive at a final solution, final uh, decision. In the absence of data, there is just no way of knowing. And one more important factor is trends. You can study trends because data warehouse holds the entire history. It holds, uh, for example, let us take from uh, January 2014 to uh, August 2014. If we are in September, it holds data till August 2014. Now I can see what trend is happening. Uh, a particular product is being sold in a particular month at a higher level. A particular product sales goes down in a particular month and that happens at regular intervals. Now I can spot that trend because of this history and when I spot that trend, I can make out a common factor and I can take a decision as to why that is happening. An operational system don't provide trends. They are merely transactional systems. Maybe you will purge the data uh, going forward in the operational systems. I mean you cannot maintain the uh, entire uh, from starting till the end because the sheer number of transactions that are happening, millions of records are getting added. So somewhere down the line you would feel that maybe I don't need uh, the two years, two years of data or three years of data. So you might even consider purging them. But in a data warehouse, the, because the main purpose of a data warehouse is to store history, you will not be, I mean, you will not be deleting uh, the history in the immediate future. And results are provided in a ready to access format. There are a number of reporting tools that will uh, give you the results in a spreadsheet format or in a uh, neat uh, reporting format where you can take an analysis.